It's another hot day in Orlando, Florida. Hey daddy, come see this anthill that kick. It was probably about this big before I kicked it. How probably, many ants do you think live in it? Probably a couple thousand. Down here in the south, they have a thing called fire ants. And what they are is they're ants that sting. Feels like fire. And they're all over the place around here and they build nests everywhere. And you might be standing somewhere and not even realize that you're standing in a nest and all of a sudden you're feeling all these stings all over you. So if you come down to Orlando, Florida, or if you come down to the south in general, just keep an eye out for fire ants. Let's get going on our bus project. Okay, so yesterday we did a little bit of work on the bus. Originally, I was gonna spray foam over the wheel wells, but you know, we have all this leftover insulation from our bus project that we kept. And so, I wasn't ready to do all this, the rest of the spray foaming in here. So I went ahead and I covered the wheel wells um, up with uh, this insulation that we got and putting some spray adhesive on it to hold it in place. After that, we cut some plywood and went ahead and covered the wheel wells with those. Got that all done and I also did some of the insulation around the back there, you know, to insulate for any engine noise, it'll, it'll help with that. One of the things that I've been putting off for a while is painting the bus. What are you doing? Now yesterday was Kira's birthday. Last night, uh, Julie, I, and Arwen took her out to the Cheesecake Factory for dinner. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Kira. Happy birthday to you. So, she's six years old. <laughs> I'm almost bigger than Daddy. You're almost bigger than daddy, yeah. So the reason we have to do the paint as one of the next steps before we can actually even panel on the inside of this bus is because I can't put my paneling up on the inside until my windows are in on the outside and I can't put my windows up on the outside until the side of the bus is painted. So today what we're gonna do is we're gonna be prepping the exterior of the bus um, for paint. I've been kind of putting off the paint for a while because I know it's going to be a huge job, but I think it's time I tackle it. So let's do it. Oh, and yesterday we received an order for the new bus. Check this out. So one of the most frequent questions that we get about the good news bus is what oven range do we have? Because our current one is awesome. We, we so liked that range that we're like we've got to get the same one because julie has been able to bake in it it's great for cooking and then we discovered that smev who is the manufacturer of the range that we love changed their name well actually they were bought out we found out that dometic bought smev which is the maker of the company that made the stove for the good news bus i think we were on dometic's website and we're looking at their, their ranges and we come to this one range and I'm like, wait a second, this looks just like our stove or, or similar, it had a lot of similarities. And we, I started looking at it, I'm like, wait, this is the same top, this is a, it's designed very similar, like what's going on here? 
and lo and behold, we found out that the that they have pretty much our same oven with some updates and changes. So yeah. we're excited about that and it's here. So the only place I could find the range was at a place called campervan-hq.com. I'll put the link in the video description for you guys. And they actually had a sale running when I bought it. If this is anything like our current range and you wanna be able to bake potatoes at a normal you know, <laughs> speed and not like wait five hours, or you wanna be and able it to- it bakes pretty even. Yeah. If you want to bake a turkey or if you want to bake pies, you want to be able to continue baking in your small space, this is the way to go. So we're going to show you the range that we got. For all of you out there who have commented and asked, what stove do you have in the Good News bus? And I've always replied with, it's, the, it's this stove, but we can't find it anymore. This is pretty much the same stove, the same range. So it's got a glass top on it which ours used to have. And this is it. Isn't it pretty? Okay, so this one has three burners. It's got a large burner, a medium-sized burner, and a small burner. So if you've seen our range in the Good News Bus, you'll notice a lot of similarities. This is all the same. This is the same. I mean, it's, it is pretty much the same stove. This will allow for more counter space because it folds down your range here, your What's oven. That? That's just a box that's got um, racks and stuff in it. So believe it or not, Julie's been able to bake a turkey in our, in our current range. And this in here looks pretty much exactly the same. All right, today I'm going to make coffee cake. Okay, so first things first, it's time to remove the stop sign. So this is what's gonna have to be repaired, is these holes here, these holes, are gonna have to be bondoed up. Next thing I have to take off are those up there. Probably one of the number one things I hear people say the most in regards to doing a bus conversion is, well, I could never do a bus conversion because I just don't know how to do those things. And the thing is, I didn't ha know how to do a lot of these things until I just tried. You know, on the Good News bus, I had never done Bondo before until that bus and I just, you know, watched a video or read you know how to do it read the instructions on the can and i just did it and sometimes i think a lot of things that stop us from being adventurous and stop us from being creative is just that we think oh i could never do that you see you watch videos and you see someone else doing it and it turns out really good and you're like i could never you know i can never have it turn out like that but you know what you don't know until you try just try I are going to go around the um, <coughs> perimeter of the bus and we are going to take off any marker lights or um, signal lights that need to be removed before painting. Okay, so I'm not a professional auto body guy. But what I got is I got a sheet of this fiberglass cloth and I got my fiberglass resin and hardener. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this cloth down to the size I need to cover the holes on the back of the bus here and for the stop sign. 
and then we're gonna install it. Okay, so what I'm about to do is mix my resin together with the hardener. So what would you say that is? Maybe two ounces? Eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. 20 drops. Give it a little mixy mix. Two of my holes covered and in two hours I can sand it. I haven't worked with it that much, but the times I have worked with it, it's pretty neat because it really simplifies a lot of things and makes filling holes like that pretty easy. Okay, next I'm gonna go ahead and cut my fiberglass for this, mix up some more resin and apply that. All right, let's mix some more resin. So when you're doing Bondo, they say that you want about a two inch perimeter around where your repair is. Um, this is gonna be real interesting. I'm gonna have to probably put my, my mat along here and wrap it over the edge. So I've gotta sand away the paint, at least up to these screws here. These smaller holes here, I'm just gonna be able to use regular Bondo on those. Need that to come up over that. Daddy, you're making dough. You're making you dough. Yeah, but it's fun watching. All right, now I wanna to go to the back of the bus and take a look at how the first one we did is hardening up. All right, so I'm up here looking at the first one I did. It's already getting pretty hard. Nice, still just a little tacky, but I think it's pretty much set up. You go and you sand this down and blend it all in. And then I'm gonna take regular Bondo and I'm gonna fill in kind of this dimple here. And hopefully when it's all said and done and painted, you won't even be able to tell that there was any holes here. And I may not be doing it, you know, like a body shop would do it. And honestly, I don't care. Um, the Bondo work I've done has held up for years and years before and it seems to be working fine. This is actually very straightforward and very easy to do. If you have holes that you need to cover, get yourself some of that fiberglass mat, get the fiberglass resin, and it comes with the hardener and go to work. All right, so what I've been doing is I've just been going around and finding any place on the bus where it's not uh, where it's not smooth because of certain reasons. Like here, I think there used to be, you know, school bus stickers and then they ripped them off and it ripped some of the paint off and then they tried to spray paint over it or something and it left some like these, these bumps and divots. So I've gone along and just, you know, smoothed all this out to where you can't feel any, you know, ridges or anything. It's been, I think over two hours now. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to start sanding one of these and see how it looks. So let's give it a try. Got that pretty much all sanded. Got the edges pretty smoothed out. Now I left a little dip here and here and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back over all this with Bondo and just smooth it out, sand it down and, and continue putting Bondo over it until it's like just flat and you can't even tell that there was anything there. So it seems to be working good. Um, it's starting to get kind of dark out here. So I think we're going to just keep working and then be done for the day. You guys have a great evening. Bye. Bye. Bye.